Welcome to a Global Risk Community Chat. Today, our guest is Michael Ho. I'm very happy to have you here today, Michael. Welcome. Thank you for inviting me, Aja. Yes, of course. It's my pleasure. So before we get into our topic for today, can you briefly introduce yourself to our audience? Absolutely. Um, my name is Michael Ho. I'm the founder of Bespoke Metrics. Uh, we have been uh, working at pre-qualification and risk analytics and construction for the last six years. Um, and we're primarily North American, but we'll, we have a lot of uh, ideas uh, to expand on a global front. Sounds super cool and exciting. So with that being said, then let's get into our topic. I understand that today we will be talking a bit about uh, pre-qualification, especially in the construction industry. So uh, what is the importance of this? Pre-qualification is really a, a role that utilizes the entire supply chain. Um, it's almost like a counterparty risk assessment. And I think in today's world, the amount of risk in the supply chain, whether it be from owners to developers to general contractors to suppliers to material builders, um, within the construction infrastructure space, um, it is a massive, massive undertaking uh, to the point where there's thousands and thousands of both material suppliers and suppliers um, that need to be vetted. And part of this pre-qualification process, when they're obtaining large contracts, a counterparty assessment is very, very standard. Uh, before you win a contract, you're essentially reviewed in terms of your financial advocacy, your ability to perform, and, and essentially your wherewithal in terms of being a supplier within the supply chain. Thank you for sharing as well. So I heard you mentioning something about the risks. Obviously, you know, the construction or supply chain is with a lot of risks. So can you maybe share some about these risks pay faced by the parties in this industry? Absolutely. I mean, right now, if you think of every risk that's happening in the world, it, it's happening across construction. Um, in terms of material costs, uh, they're altering, you know, every minute. Um, the stability of just suppliers globally um, in terms of producing, you know, very small pieces um, that go into a very large construction project. The smallest piece can put in a ripple effect of delays, uh, which delays cost money uh, to, the, to the end project, um, as well as the liquidity issue, I think, always comes up. Whether you're talking about a recession or talking about any time you're looking at construction, the liquidity and availability of cash on hand is extremely important. Do you have the ability to both pay your staff pay for your materials and produce what is outlined in your contracts. Uh, all of these are culminating and all moving uh, at the same time. Um, it's, and I, I think the word unprecedented has been used, uh, you know, for the last several years, but the amount of risk and the amount of change that's happening in all of these variables um, is at an all time high. Yeah. Thank you for that as well. So I want to follow up with a question because from what I understand, it kind of aligns with pre-qualification. So with this, so what would be the benefit of maybe using standardized data and especially why with a, you know, construction industry or overall in supply chain, this should be, you know, considered essential, especially while managing risk? Yeah, great question. Um, the construction industry, I think people have always identified that as a slow adopter to technology um, that for the most part, you know, construction gets done, but they utilize old habits, uh, which has not really relied heavily on technology. Um, that's changing at an increasingly rapid pace, that the ability to essentially utilize technology in the appropriate manner uh, in construction is extremely important. When you do pre-qualification, there's a massive amount of data that needs to be collected, verified, and analyzed. Right now, there really is no universal standard. However, we know that there are universal standards in accounting principles and accounting reporting. So from, from a financial perspective, as well as probably a health and safety perspective, there's some standards that are already in place. Now, can the industry adopt industry technology standards for data collection and verification, which will save the entire supply chain time, efficiency, as well as accuracy? in terms of the way this, the, all of this data is being collected. So right now, data in finance, health and safety, the onslaught of ESG requirements and minority interest groups, all of these things are starting to happen at the same time. The data requirements are increasing. And what we're trying to do is match a technology solution to both start with the standardization of data, 
to be able to utilize the technology appropriately on a go-forward basis. And I'm hoping that this standardization actually catches up, especially in the construction industry. And, you know, it's obvious with ESG and everything, so or the health and safety is just, it's better, I think, for everyone, for the companies, it, for the people, for it, everyone. So it, it simply makes sense. It's just yeah. that the resistance to change is very, very um, uh, deep uh, within the industry. So everyone thinks that they have a special sauce. Uh, the special sauce is not in particular variables of data. Um, the special sauce is their relationships and their expertise in the actual construction. Yeah. And then let's follow up with one more question about it. So obvious hearing that, you know, the special source is something else as well. So what would be then your takeaway points that you would like to leave to audience regarding this, you know, like prequalifications or standardization? The adoption of technology is increasing at an un unfathomable pace that by take on the industry as an outsider is that there's going to be winners and losers, that entities that adopt technology wholeheartedly, that jump in with both feet, with lots of energy, with lots of um, support uh, throughout their entire operations, they're going to win. I, I fear for entities that are highly resistant or want to wait until all the water settle and then they're going to make technology decisions. I think at that point in time, it's going to be too late. That technology and construction, when you think about the frustration of adoption, to me, that's actually the opportunity in this industry. There's massive, massive and rapid technology change. Uh, that's happening within the industry. I'm hoping that everyone in the construction industry grabs onto it with both hands and moves forward uh, with a lot of energy. I'm hoping that also our audience that is listening to us are going to become the early adopters of this technological advancement so that you know they will be essentially then the winners when it comes to this uh, well, race, I guess. So uh, is there anything, any last things you would like to add? Um, no, outside of the fact that I think that right now there's an absolutely huge amount of opportunity. I think that when you have these massive shifts and changes, uh, whether it be regulation, whether it be recessionary talk, whether it be technology adoption, all of these things create opportunity. Those companies, those people at these companies, um, it is up to them to take hold of these opportunities and move forward. Um, and I think that's really, really important when you have these, I would consider them paradigm shifts of change. Thank you for sharing that as well. And with that, I also don't have any other questions uh, left for today to ask. So I want to thank you so much for joining us today, sharing your insights. I'm you know, hoping that also people catch up to these technological trends and everything in the construction industry or other you know, traditional industries like this. So thank you so much for sharing insights. You're very welcome, Edja. Thank you very much. Thank you as well.